Hello everyone and welcome to IEM Labs. Now in this tutorial I shall teach you about the Pandas library in Python. So what is the agenda for today's tutorial? The agenda for today's tutorial is to know a little bit about the Pandas framework or rather the Pandas package and how to use Pandas to carry out its various functions. Now what is Pandas? Pandas is an open source package which is used as a data manipulation and analysis tool. The reason for Pandas popularity is that it is very easy to use and using Pandas we can easily manipulate data given to us in any format. Mostly it is used for data given to us in, uh, in the form of Excel spreadsheets or comma separated values or even for JSON formats, we can use Pandas. Now Pandas has been widely used as a data manipulation tool mainly in machine learning problems and due to the ease of use for Pandas, that is one of the reasons why Pandas is so much popular among machine learning enthusiasts today. So before using Pandas, you need to install Pandas on your local system. You can either do, do that and how you will do it? You can open your Windows command line interface and type in the command pip install Pandas. Now I have already installed Pandas in my system. Here pip install Pandas and press enter. Now I have already installed Pandas in my system. That is why it is showing requirement already satisfied. Now, if you do not want to use your local system, you can always use your web browser and how through Google Collaboratory. Now, Google Collaboratory is a free software wherein many of the important packages in Python are already pre-installed. It is an interactive notebook where you can code and run little snippets of Python code of Python code. So. What you're going to need to do is open Google Colab on your favorite web browser and first of all import pandas as pd. Now I am doing pandas as pd that is important pandas as pd so that I do not have to write the word pandas every time I use the package. Now before using or manipulating any data that is given to us first we need to upload the data to our Google Collaboratory Notebook. I am going to upload through here that is this symbol that is upload to session storage. I am going to upload this loan file. Now we have got loan.csv. Now if you want to get access to such data sets I recommend you to go to Kaggle.com because Kaggle.com is the most popular website for machine learning and data science enthusiasts and it is a great place for beginners to start practicing their skills. Now in Kaggle.com you go to this search button search bar and type in data sets and you will get many many public data sets which are specifically designed for uh, for beginners for various machine learning enthusiasts of different levels. You can filter these by last 90 days or small or large data site that data set site size and so on. I will provide the link in the description below. So returning to our Google Collaborative Notebook to read the CSV file into our notebook we need to write pandas that is in this case I am writing pd because I have imported pandas as pd. So pd dot read underscore csv within parentheses and within quotes we are going to write the name of the file that is loan.csv and press shift enter and we see that the entire data set has been created. Now to manipulate this entire data set first we need to write that is store the data set into a variable and I'm going to name the variable as data set so pd dot read csv loan dot csv and press shift enter to print the first five elements 
or the first five rows of the data set, we're going to do dataset dot head. Now, if we change the value within this parenthesis, say we give it 10, then the first 10 or the first number of rows that we type in here are going to get printed. Similarly, we can print the last five values through dataset dot tail. Press shift enter and the last five rows of the dataset will get printed. Now, if we write dataset dot shape and press shift enter, we are going to get the shape of the dataset that is 614 rows and 13 columns. Okay. Now, as you can see, there are various non values over here. There are various non values within the data set. Now, non values is the null values wherein we do not have the data to fill in that empty space in that data set. That is why it is replaced as none or which represents null values. Now, to remove the non, non values, we need to write a very simple command. But before that, we are going to find out how many non values are there in each column. We are going to do this through dataset dot is null parenthesis dot sum. This will give us a total number of non values for each column in the dataset. Now, as you can see, we have got the non values for each column in the data set. Uh, the, gender, uh, the gender column has 13 non values, the dependence column has 15 non values, and the self employed column has 32 non values. So, to remove all these non values, we need to write data set dot drop na within parentheses in place equals to true. Now there is one other hyper uh, one other parameter that we can include over here and that is the axes now by default the axis is taken as zero that is for each row containing any number of non values if a row contains a non value then that row will get deleted from the data set now if we do axis equals to one then if one column contains a non value then that column will get uh, will get deleted from the data set now since we have 614 rows and 13 columns so if we do axis equals to 1 in this case let me just zoom in now if we do axis equals to 1 in this case then an entire column might get removed which means that 614 values will get removed from the data set and that is not beneficial for any machine learning problem we need as much amount of data as we can get our hands on so we are going to do axis equals to zero and in place equals to true now in place equals to true eliminates the data in place that is the data set gets manipulated simultaneously as we are dropping the column so we do not need to write any so we do not need to store the manipulated data set into any other variable so we press shift enter and we have run it without any error now if we do data set dot shape And shift enter then we see that the shape has been reduced to 480 comma 13 that is the number of rows has been reduced to 480 so this is how you can read a csv file or an excel sheet into your notebook or python script and this is how you can manipulate and drop data from your data set so thank you for watching this video guys Please do like, share and subscribe to our channel and please do not forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified of any video that we post on this channel. Thank you.